Yeah, correct. So I think you might get a little bit of, of a bounce here early September. We're around this three day holiday weekend. Markets are starting to think maybe the Fed is coming to an end of their hiking cycle. I think by late September, October, that might be the case, but then I think we're going to start to see weaker economic data that's going to freak the markets out about maybe maybe the Fed already pushed us into a recession and it could be a bad one. And then the biggest question, which could really be detrimental to the stock market, is how does the Fed get us out of the next recession? Every past recession, they've printed us out. If inflation is still even at four to five percent, and we know it's way higher right now. How do they print money with four to five? I mean, what are they going to send it to 15, 20% inflation by doing that? They're not going to do that. And so you could be in this prolonged recession that just really stinks, frankly. So it's going to be a trader's market. Um, great to get educated, learn how to read charts. It's super helpful in guiding to like entries and exits. This is the first bear market for Bitcoin where the Fed isn't printing money, right? So really, if anything, this should be the worst bear market of Bitcoin's history because it's the one where the Fed's not quantitative easing, right? It was That was remarkable how hawkish Jerome Powell was. I mean, his, his whole speech was eight minutes and the markets just freaked out, right? I mean, from that point on, we basically saw nonstop downside in the equity markets, the stock market, all the way until this morning's jobs report. And the jobs report was so key because it showed small signs of things weakening just a little bit but not enough to scare the markets that were going into a fast recession, right? So it's enough. It was just a little weakening to show that maybe the Fed can start to wind down the hikes, which is what the market wants, but not enough to show a bad recession coming, almost like that Goldilocks, not too hot, not too cold numbers this morning. Yeah, so, so number one, I don't think we're even close to that at this point, unfortunately, right? So, you know, one of the things you look for, what we saw, we saw Terra Luna collapse in crypto. That was a big event, right? So you saw crypto really seeing some of these, but it didn't go to the extent where people started to totally freak out about their crypto holdings. So that tells me crypto still has more downside to go. I think at minimum 12, 13,000 on Bitcoin, I even have a worst case scenario of 3,500, which would mirror the Amazon collapse in the dot com era, right? So Amazon dropped 95% from peak to trough in the dot com collapse. If if you look at like Amazon, what it is today, and ultimately is Bitcoin that type of big entity, then that may be the for the foreboding for what we could see there. In the stock market, you still have people that are buying the dip. One of the key notes about when a market finally bottoms, it's when everyone's way too scared to buy the dip, right? So we're definitely not close yet. I think just in the at bare minimum, we have to revisit the pre COVID highs. So if you go back to, to February of 2020 in the stock market, that's probably at bare minimum where we have to go. And I think that's just if we don't go into a recession. So just the tightening that's going on, the Fed tightening monetary policy, stopping stimulus, the government obviously not able to print quite as much as they were during COVID. I think that's where you're going. If we enter a recession, that's where you could start to see us go even lower than those levels. So, so I, one of the one of the biggest concerns I have is that we're entering this new phase of the market where long term investors are really going to struggle. If you look at the long term investor, they've really been in control since really 2009. I mean, every dip's been bought. We've made new all time high after new all time high. And there really hasn't been a scenario where we've had a long bear market. However, I think now you're starting to get into that situation because the Fed is going to be handcuffed from printing us out of the next recession in a meaningful way because they, the inflation is going to stay too high. And then you had QE1, QE2, 2.5, then, then COVID. And then, I mean, it's been printing and basically down to zero interest rates for, since that point. This is the first period where really we're seeing that that pulling back on monetary policy and, and tightening. So to me, that tells me that it could be unfortunately worse than past past ones. But I do think for Bitcoin's case that wherever it bottoms out, that's going to be an amazing buying opportunity. I don't think Bitcoin's ever going away at this point. I think it's going to be something that we're with us for the long term as the digital gold. And so I'm eagerly awaiting moves down so I can actually accumulate some some more Bitcoin. I, I have different accounts set up. I have an, a, an account just for crypto, account just for stocks. Stocks, I'm in and out since I go long and short quite a bit. You know, I, I'm sometimes full in, then sometimes I'm only 25% in. Right now, crypto wise, about 33% invested in various cryptos.
um, you know, basically I was looking for the bounce off that level we talked about, which was the 2017 high. So I picked up a little bit of uh, chain link, a little Solana, a little Avalanche, just for a quick bounce here, as I do think they'll bounce up. And I think, I mean, we could just take a look at like uh, Solana here, but I think it's bouncing up just a little bit here. Yep, just getting a little bit of an uptick here, maybe a small micro bull flag here. So I think, you know, resistance around 35 is probably the extent of what I'm expecting. But I think for the most part, yeah, I mean, I have, I have definitely in my mind the the idea that once we get into the mid to low teens that's where i really start to buy up more and more bitcoin and then i'll leave myself room in case it gets into like below ten thousand. um but yeah i mean definitely proper allocation is important here when i say load up i'm not talking about investing all my money right it's 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 strictly a percentage of my net worth is allocated towards crypto. And at most I would have that amount in crypto at one time.